All right, so here we are. Uh, it's Thursday. Class number 19. Usually a packet has about no more than 25 classes. The packet two just got huge. It got ridiculously big, and I apologize for that. But I, I did want to have a packet three to be really tiny. So went around and gave stamps for this one. Um, I know I have not given you a, a, a official assignment. And I'm not going to now because they're getting close enough to the packet being due. So somehow I got to work out. I got to I got to work out the difference between in class kids with the stamps and you guys without the stamps. So uh, maybe I'll adjust your scores on those three papers or three or four that you've turned in uh, to make it so it all evens out. I don't know. So I'll figure it out. It is different. It's just it's a different situation. Met table four. Uh, maybe one day we'll have time on here to start meeting you guys. You may not like the questions I ask you, though. <laughs> uh, the kids are sweating it out up there today. Here is uh, what we did. This is the this is actually a question on the take home test. I wouldn't expect to see all this. Uh, you know, I said, just give me, show it to me at least the five big steps uh, would be what I want here. Um, so, you know, the main points here that would be enough. I don't need all the periphery stuff uh, on the take home, but this is the birth of the power rule and it's kind of the birth of derivatives. So it's pretty important. Talk about that. Uh, this, this, the idea here is that that uh, you know, you have the Leibniz method and the Newton. I use the Newton because I'm lazy. X dot, A dot, V dot. It's simpler than putting dx, dt, you know, kind of stuff. But they both mean the same thing. Later on, as we said in here, you can't use this if it's like if we're doing if we're doing force per time df dx. F, F dot is not df dx. F dot is df dt, which is the rate of time, rate of force. But Sometimes we want force over a force as force changes in a in a distance. That's so that's different. So you have to be careful if you're using the dot thing that it is kinematics we're talking about. In other words, it is related to time. Sometimes if it's related to distance for other things, it's not going to work. We did those. Those are a couple of qu couple of quartets looking at pink equations and derivatives. Uh, here's the power rule. I, I like this slide. It's got a lot of stuff on this one slide. Now, this is on, I think this was in yesterday or day before Tuesday's uh, slideshow. If you go to Facebook, you'll see this. But it gives a, it's a good synopsis. It's one to kind of keep in your notebook. It'll help you in uh, calculus as well. Pink equations. Orange versus pink. Uh, you can go trio, quartet, quintet. If you were to give it a color, maybe it's purple or teal or whatever, or turquoise, but we don't do, we don't do that because a couple of reasons. One, quartet is about as far as humans are going to go in kinematics because anything else usually results in hospitalization or death. So normally we don't deal with quintets. Uh, if you're in a quintet, you're in a heck of a car accident. I'm not talking about a fender bender. I'm talking about you got wrapped around a tree or I-35 or something. Um, and then if you go past quintet, now you're involved. You're getting, you're, you're getting blowed up. I mean, there's something big happening. Part of it depends on the coefficient. I mean, on the constant. So we were doing this um, at the end on Tuesday, and I said, let's just start here on Thursday. So I'm gonna quickly wrap this part up. Uh, the, after this, you should have to stay up with the classes. You should have, that was homework for them. And I went around and checked that today. About 60% about, uh, of them had it done. Some, most of them had something done on it. But um, here we go. So let's, let's wrap this thing up. If I'm doing a quartet, a pink quartet, uh, then the acceleration is uh, going to be linear, okay? It's not constant like it is in a trio. It's linear, it's growing linearly. So in that situation, then that's, that's really what that all is all about. And then the main thing comes down to here. Here's, what I'm here's the main point I'm trying to make with this. With a trio, the V versus T is linear. With a quartet, 
the V versus T is parabolic. So the reason why this became a problem is students were using this equation in a quartet situation. They were in the, uh, some people will do it next week. You'll do it next week on the test. V naught plus V final divided by two. And I've had this as an essay question on test before, but the question is why this, the, this is not true. And the question is why, why is that not true? This, however, before you answer that, this is true. V bar equals V naught plus V final uh, divided by two. And, 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 and we have the other equation for uh, v, v bar, which is the total uh, position change over total time over delta tau. I'm just gonna say tau, tau means total time over the total time of your interval. Um, that is another equation for V bar. Uh, and that does work, that does work here. V bar is equal to change in position over tau. That still is good for anything, trio, quartet, anything. But then if that's the case, why doesn't, uh, somebody wants to jump in there uh, and answer this, why doesn't this, why doesn't this work? Whereas this does. Is this thing on? Yeah, you guys can hear me. Anybody want to try it? Uh, go ahead. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me turn this up. Okay, now say something. I thought somebody was mumbling something. Uh, Well, we we'll, can okay, stop right, let, let's think about it. Right here, okay, on this graph, and uh, a lot of this stuff comes out of students making mistakes and then me writing a problem about it so that mistake doesn't happen again. Uh, but on this graph, I don't want to spend much time on this, I want to move on, but your silence concerns me. Okay, move that over a bit. So the V bar is delta X over T over tau. But on this graph, if I if I say that's a posit, that's a dot dot dot, and then I have this situation, and let's say this is my for my interval, this is my T naught, let's say. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll just say T one. Let's say T one. Let me blow this up so you can see it. So if this is T one. Uh, and this is T2, okay, then this is V0, this is V1 and V2, right? And so if I want to find the average velocity between those two, wouldn't that just be the middle? Wouldn't it just be right? Wouldn't V bar then just be right here? That's V bar, right? Which is just basically uh, the two Vs V1 plus V2, or V0 plus V final is what I said. Same thing as V1 plus V2 divided by two. It's the middle. Well, over here, when you do that, T1, T2, and that is V1, V2. Why can't I say that the average velocity is the middle velocity? Why isn't, why isn't V bar just right there? Because of the curve parabola. Thank you. Ding, 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 ding. Two zoom points for that one. Because it's a curve. It's not a linear situation. Okay? You will, duh. But that's what students do. Students try and use this formula in pink situations, in in quartet situations, and you can't do it. It's a basic math, but it happens all the time. I got tired of looking, tired of watching it happen. So I made this, that's why I made these questions up here. 
Okay, now we're done with that sheet. Okay, the rest of the time is a puzzle. We're gonna play a game. And I don't know if we've played this game in here yet. Um, we played it in class a couple of times. We're gonna play this game. And it, go ahead and write this down. I'll, I'll take a minute, write this down on a piece of scrap paper. Maybe I'll come up with a worksheet on it, but when I do that, it puts me back another day. I, I'm, and then I'm even further behind. Okay, so um, this is a situation involving jerk, right? It's a, it's a, it's a third order. Uh, we would call this the the fancy way of saying this. This is a third order polynomial, right? Meaning that the highest ranking power is three. So a third order polynomial. polynomial. Okay, um, and in, in physics, really, we're trying to understand the universe two ways. I guess three ways. One, through visualizing it with pictures and drawings. Uh, two, with equations. And three, with graphs. So really, we trust, so really, we have to understand all three ways. So whenever we're looking at something from different perspectives, I'll look at it through first a drawing, a think about if you can, sometimes it's hard to make a drawing even. Um, like with, with quantum, it's hard, sometimes black holes, it's hard to even visualize. But with a drawing first, and then either with a graph, depending on the situation, probably with the graph next, how are things changing, right? And then finally with an equation. Um, and an equation is sort of a suitcase for a graph. It, it takes that graph and and condenses it down to an equation. It's a little more convenient. So you need to be able to read um, graphs, of course, and that's what science reasoning is. On the ACT, a good chunk of the science reasoning exam is, is, is interpreting graphs. Um, but to understand how the, the number one word, and remember the number one word in physics is relationships. So to understand those relationships, so this is sort of like grammar. This is like mathematical grammar. Remember in uh, English class, probably in seventh grade or something, you took a sentence and you diagrammed it, right? You said, well, this, this word is the noun. This word is the verb. Every sentence needs a noun and a verb. And this is an adjective. And this word is an adverb. And so you were saying, so you're taking that sentence and pulling it apart. And that was my favorite part of English, I guess, because my logical brain liked that, diagramming sentences. Um, so here we're, we're diagramming an equation. So we're going to pull out the three, we're going to pull out the six, pull out the four, pull out the seven. What is that? And what does it tell us about that situation? Okay. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing we're also, we also talk about is what is the difference between coefficients and constants? Um, in the pink and the orange, back to this pink and orange. Okay, here, uh, this, okay, this one sixth, one half, one half, those are coefficients. Okay, they're mathematical coefficients. They are not constants. There's a big difference. Uh, both just in practically and conceptually. Coefficients tell you the mathematical relationship, you know, and, and from and they come from derivations. Um, it's like in the second orange, there's, you know, V naught T plus one half A T squared. That one half came from the derivation. It, it doesn't represent anything as far as a physical thing but when I go, when I do this way, now this eight here, this eight is a constant. The four, the negative four is a constant. The three is a constant. The one third is a constant. Those are constants. They're not coefficients because they tell you something about the situation, not just mathematical relationship, but what's happening 
at the level, at, in the problem, in the situation you're looking at. So the quick answer there for the difference is coefficients, since they're mathematical, they have no units. Coefficients have no units. Constants have units. And what was it that Brittany said today? She said, uh, she said, I liked it. Um, she said, coefficients stay, ah, she said they stay, or she said, so you could say that they stay with the equation. This is this paraphrasing what you said. They stay with the equation. I gave her a couple of discussion points for that. I may have to bump that up if I keep, if I start using this a lot. Uh, you guys end up teaching me how to teach. You guys, your questions make me a better teacher. So, go, oh, that's a brilliant way of thinking about it. Um, sometimes you don't know you're being brilliant, but you, just your question was brilliant. So they stay with the equation, uh, whereas constants are situational. All right, and then here we'll explain that. So um, back here, now let's talk about these situations. So here we have a, the equation I told you to write down here. It's for a, a quartet situation. Something is, there's experiencing a lot of jerk. That's a very dangerous situation we got here. It's probably resulting in somebody being hurt really bad. Um, and let's go through and say, what are each one of these? What is the, I wanna know what the, what this is a con, these are all constants but the, each constant has units. So I want to know what are the units on that constant. Now you take these things separately. So this, this says, this first, this first one says it's 3t cubed. So x equals 3t cubed. Well, x equals feet in this case, right? It's feet is what I chose. So x equals feet, which is a unit of measure, unit of distance, it's not a unit of time. X doesn't equal t squared, t cubed. X doesn't equal seconds cubed. That's apples and oranges. So the three has got to do a couple of things. One, it's going to tell, it gives you a number, gives you a magnitude, but it also is telling you something about what's happening. So three represents, what would the units of three have to be to make x in terms of feet. Feet per second? Feet per second, we're getting somewhere. I will tell you this, uh, each one of these is feet per something uh, because I gotta have feet. I gotta end up in feet, so I gotta introduce it. These are all feet per, feet per, feet per. That's just feet, feet per second cubed. Feet per second cubed. There it is. Um, so a point to each of you for getting us going there. Feet per second cubed. And the reason why she said that was we want to end our ultimate, and I'm going to show you a little algorithm here in a second, but our ultimate goal is to end up in feet over here. And so if that's cubic time, I've got to get rid of that. So the three has got to tell me a magnitude and it's got to get rid of the cubic feet. So it ends up being feet per second cubed. Well, that is a unit of what? It's not position. Is it velocity? Is it acceleration? Is it jerk? Would it, would it be jerk? Jerk. Jerk. See? So hidden in the equation for position is hiding in there is the jerk. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. So now let's do it again. Let's play this game. It's a puzzle. Everything's a puzzle. Everything in the universe is a puzzle, basically. So here we have x equal to both. So now we have six t squared feet. I want to end up in feet again. So now how do I get rid of that t squared? How do I get rid of that second squared? Feet, feet per, per second squared. Feet per second squared which we know is a unit of acceleration. Aha, so acceleration is hiding in there. And then we get, uh, what would the next one be? 
V just V per second. Just V, velocity happens to be V naught. And then, of course, no, yes, 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 yes. And then the seven is just X naught. That's, that is just feet. So, so this, looking at the equation, you become, as you're a physicist, you become an equation master. Uh, you can look at an equation and it's not just numbers and units in, you know, variables to you. It tells you a story. So this equation tells me a story. Uh, it tells me that this thing, there's a lot of jerk going on. A jerk means that, uh, that the force uh, is changing over time. So it's a really uh, dynamic situation. Well, what is my initial jerk? This is worth, uh, I'll give you three zoom points for this one. What's my, and I'll give you a hint, it's not three. What, the answer is not three, but what is my initial jerk? Would it be 18? Ah, there it is. 18, how did you possibly pull it out of a hat? Where'd you get that? Multiply three by six, because it's one sixth. Because she knew, thinking back on this equation right here, she knew that the, that, that, that the constant uh, in front of the T cubed in a pink situation is one sixth J naught. So if that is equal to three, J naught has to be 18. Okay, eight, that's very good. So it's, so J, so J naught, you can throw that in there too, is a third little level. I'm gonna change this next year and make it a third level. So therefore J naught in this case is 18 feet per second cubed. And now, uh, by the same token, then what then would a not be? Twelve. Twelve. Exactly. So good. So give you guys uh, points for jumping on that one. A oh, this is J not not meaning initial. A not is twelve feet per second squared, and V not is the negative four. Okay, so I guess I could say that uh, V not is negative four uh, feet per second. And then X naught, of course, is in plus seven. Okay, X naught equals seven. So I'll, I'm gonna change this next year and make it a third level, third, three, three boxes. Okay, so uh, now looking at this equation, I'm thinking, wow, uh, this situation, if I were to visualize this, I can graph it. We'll, we'll be graphing this tomorrow, these kind of things tomorrow. But, but if I visualize it uh, in a jerk situation, remember when you do cubic functions, right? Uh, if a cubic function looks like this in general, if there's any kind of, okay, hold on, hold on. I didn't talk about this in class, but this will be a virtual special here. But a, a uh, da, 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 da. okay, if this is T and this is X and I'm doing a cubic situation, the graph's gonna come like this. Um, if it's anything at all interesting, I mean, if it's boring, it'll be this, pop, 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 right? That's boring. That probably isn't it. Let's say it's more like this situation. In this case, it's going, I've never seen that before. It's going to, um, okay. In this case, it's going to look like this. Um, this is a seven, so it's going to come up up and then down and then back up again. Something like, some, specific symmetrical, something like that. And we'll, we'll talk about this more tomorrow. Okay, so the point is that that's, I have to dash that in, right? Because that's that's imaginary time. That's that's before, but sometimes you wanna see what's happening before and, and tell you the truth, uh, there's a guy named PM Dirac, Paul Dirac, uh, who was, one of the leaders of quantum theory. Um, there's a book about him I have over here in my bookshelf it's called The Strangest Man. He was a strange dude, but he was the master of complex numbers. You guys learn complex numbers, right? And that's from Paul P.M. Dirac, which those imaginary numbers mean something. So even imaginary time, I, not I roof, but I mean something in physics, but that's more later. So yeah, that's why sometimes you wanna go ahead and show the third, second quadrant, because you wanna see well, what was happening before this. Okay, so um, when, I look at this, when I look at this problem, I go, wow, uh, first off, a jerk of 18 feet per second cubed is really changing fast. 
did I show, did, I don't know if we saw this here. If I, hopefully I showed you this. I know I put it on Facebook, but remember the pilots that would, um, they were undergoing G's, right? They're, they're, how many G's can you handle? And they were in that human centrifuge and then pull that handle and that would make them go faster and faster. Um, that, that they were experiencing a jerk because when, when acceleration, which is what G is, right? G 9.81, that's acceleration. When acceleration changes with time, we have jerks. So when you pull that throttle back, which makes you go faster and faster around a centrifuge, you are experiencing a jerk. Now, what happened is they went from one G to all of a sudden six, seven, eight Gs, and then they just went right out. Their blood just left their head. And if you, in this situation, that's 18 feet per second cubed, followed by you're also accelerating to begin with. And if you found yourself in that situation, you'd have a stroke most likely either you're going to be unless your body was situated perfectly your blood is going to be all over the place and so you're going to definitely stroke out uh with this equation so it's not so when i see the equation you see the equation you see math i see the equation i see a stroke say <laughs> so this guy went to the hospital um so you go well who, who cares wait a minute i'll tell you who cares you play video games right video games have you think that just all just comes like magic? No, there's physics engines that are making that game. All of that stuff you see is vectors, matrices, and these kind of equations that make your body do these weird things in the game or the car or whatever it is, and they're getting better. So once you do VR and virtual reality, and then you're going to start to feel it. Now you feel it in the controller. Once you feel it in your chair, I guess you can do that now but you're going to be experiencing. So, so if they want you to experience what this guy's doing, he hits, he gets into a car wreck and you experience that in your living room, you're going to, they're going to put you through these kind of equations. So um, these are called physics engines and they mean something, but you don't want to put the guy in the hospital playing a video game. Oh man, I made the, I made the, I made the jerk 18. Ah, I forgot the decimal. I stroked out on me. Oops. Liability. Uh, okay, let's knock this one out. I don't think we did this one. Did we do this one a couple days ago? I get mixed up which class I've done it in. I don't think so. Write this down. I want you to do this. This is all we're going to do the rest of the time. We're going to work on these and we're going to talk about these. So this is just put your mind on this. Is what we're going to do. And by the way, on the take home test, 10 and 11, you do the same thing, except those are a little harder. We're about to work those. But let's practice with this one. I'll shut up for a minute and let you uh, give me the units and what it represents. Okay. Write this down. Try it. I am going to, I guess I won't. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. You work on it for a second. Well, the other teachers are starting agreeing with me, so, okay. Teachers are starting to revolt a little bit. Uh, um, all right, so here we go. Let's see what you got. I'll, I'll show you what I got and compare it to what you got. This, by the way, works a lot better if you actually participate, if you're, if you're just one just sitting back. Um, so the four, I got to end up this time in meters. So I, I, I go ahead and just put meters per meters per meters per. Oh, 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 okay, whoa, whoa. I'll show you this. There's, there's, I'll show you a template here in just a minute. 
So a one and a half meters per, that's T to the fourth. So I got I to gotta negate that. And so that must be seconds then to the fourth on bottom. Well, seconds to the fourth on bottom, meters per second to the fourth, uh, that's per second, per second, per second, per second, that's snap. And I don't, you get a snap of four. Oh, that's not a snap of four. Oh my goodness. One six, one half. That's like a snap of like 50 or 60. Um, because remember, we didn't do, you know, okay. Stop. Right here. All oh, right here, right here. No, no, right here. Yes. Okay, see that one sixth goes in front of J naught, you know? Like you could have predicted that. Uh, it comes from what's called the antiderivative. And I'm not gonna teach you the antiderivative right now. We're gonna wait till April uh, when we have to. We have to do antiderivatives in April. We have no choice. For now, derivatives are enough. But let me just say this much. Antiderivative does, you know what? We have done antiderivatives. Uh, we've done them in the form of graphs way back with the finger dance. Uh, if we have a, um, if I have a V versus T, you didn't realize you were doing antiderivatives when you were doing a finger dance. And it looks like this, remember this thing where you'd fill that in, then you'd, then you'd have this, you'd fill that in, then you'd do this and you'd fill that in. And then you, from there, you could plot the, um, you could plot the X versus T, you know, you take the area, and then you'd, you know, that'd be up, it'd be like this, and then it would go steeper. That's what that tells, then it comes down. So that right there, you know what you're doing? You're doing antiderivatives. You don't know it, but you're doing antiderivatives. You're doing areas, and antiderivatives is the driving force of what's called integrals. And for some idiot reason, I didn't show you the symbols that go with integrals. I, I don't know what it was, I forgot or something, but I mean, we'll get to it. I, I should have got to it earlier though. Maybe I thought it was too much at once. So we have done antiderivatives, but there is an equation. Okay, coming up here, this is called antiderivatives. I'm gonna add this as one of my screenshots. So anti, and then I'll, I'll put a caption in there, antiderivatives. Um, so, Putting, putting, putting boundary conditions on antiderivatives, like where you start and where you end, that turns them into integrals. But it, that's doing it with graphs. But in an equation, when I go from here to here, that going up in an equation is also an antiderivative. Okay? So to do... I bet you could figure out the formula for antiderivative. It is the reverse of the process of derivatives. It reverses the derivative. So if you're in calculus, uh, if, if Brandon is here and a few others that have had calculus, you already know what I'm talking about, but you reverse the derivative. And so you could then take that and figure out what would be the coefficient in a snap. The coefficient in a jerk is one sixth. What's the coefficient in a snap? And I think maybe um, I'll I'll do that in this I'll, I'll do that in the in the comment section, like the additional section because that's a little bit beyond where we're at right now. But I, uh, just to throw it out there. Okay, so back to this. So the units on the three then uh, to make to, to negate the t squared, I'm going to put it meters per second squared, and that's just acceleration. It's not a naught but it's acceleration. And then uh, the seven is just meters, not meters per nothing, meters, just meters. And that, that would be X naught. Okay, so far so good, because it's about to get harder. Any questions before we jump, kick it up a notch? All right, so let's kick it up a notch. Okay. There we go. Here we go. And I'm showing you the template here, but 
first before the template, write this one down on your paper, in your notes, notebook, whatever. And by the way, those are due next week. All your notes worth a hundred points. And those notes should include all those practice problems you were working on. So you should get quite a few pages out of it. Anywho, um, it doesn't have to be pages. You can write real small and you'd still get a lot of credits. Okay, so now, um, now do it. Do the same thing. Tell me what is the five and what is the six? I can, I can help you out. I already know that's gonna be meters per and meters per. But now I got to think what goes on bottom. And I'll give you a hint. This is not seconds cubed. And this is not seconds. Is it seconds to the fourth? That is it. This is seconds to the fourth. And I'll speak for you. I think it's Eric talking there, but I speak for you. I think why you did that was you said, okay, I've got, an, I've got to negate sort of the T cubed, but I want to end up with a seconds on bottom. So now it's not just totally wiping it out. I want to wipe it out and take one more away because I want to end up with seconds down there on bottom. Uh, so I had to make it meters to so were seconds before, which is snap. And then this one is, what would this one be? And if you use that logic, what would this one be? The second square. Right, which that makes this acceleration. So in that velocity equation, in their hiding was a little bit of snap, which is deadly, and uh, like a snake, you know? And then uh, acceleration was hiding in there as well, negative acceleration. Um, now, Here's a template I gave the kids in class because they were really struggling with this one. Uh, and I said, look, here's what you can do. Um, you know you want to end up, okay, for, oh, 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 that goes with that. Let's go with this one over here. So with this one, let's say, you, you put a box. This is sort of like unit analysis, but it's, it's, it's simpler. It's, it's just one little template you do every time. Uh, I know I want to end up in, um, and sometimes this is good because it's not always kinematic. Sometimes you end up with Newtons or something, Newtons per meter. Um, and then let's see, that's just going to be also gonna be meters per second. I'm trying to end up in because it's time, because it's velocity. And so I know that in this first one, I have seconds cubed. And so the question is here on this one, if I have seconds cubed and I'm trying to have meters per second, how am I going to do it? Well, this has to be, meters and then this like like eric said this has to be seconds to the fourth because uh you know three of them die and i've left one left there over here i got meters on top uh, meters on top and then i've got to have second square down there so i end up with meters per second so if this if this makes you feel better i hate algorithms because once I give a student an algorithm, they stop thinking, they start plugging it into a formula and thus they, their, their brain just goes to that little place where I plug things in and out pop little black boxes. In pops this, out pops answer. Very dangerous way to think. So now this is, um, I sent them to the board on this one. So this will take up most of our last seven minutes, but I want you to, um, oh, I'll blow these up. And you're going to do the same thing. And then this will help you on the take home test. You have some like this. Uh, make it so you can see that. Okay. That's the first one. So, first, write that one down and put some boxes underneath. And then here is the second one. So, we get both in there. Here's the second one. Uh, there. Now you can see them both. It's a two. The reason, well, as you're writing that down, the reason why I started doing this about 10 years ago is I, I this came out of AP physics because my, my AP physics students got lazy and they would put, they'd do this long equation and then instead of finding the units of each, con, each constant, they would uh, put a, like I do. I mean, I'm as bad as they are. 
they put a bracket around the whole thing and put meters, a bracket around the whole thing and put feet per second squared, you know, because they know it's acceleration and oh, all the units got to work out, right? That's dangerous, dangerous shortcut, but we all do it because we all get tired of meticulously showing all the units. So I made them for about a week. I made them go back and show every unit of every, every constant. And so then I started writing these sheets and then making them do, now I make you guys do it. It'll help you in AP physics though. Because like I say, it's like interpreting a, a, senten a sentence in, in English, you're interpreting an equation in physics. It really helps you in the ACT, that kind of stuff as well. Not that the they never, ACT would never have a problem this hard, but um, just that you can interpret their, their equations. Okay, so running low on time, you keep working. I'll put these answers in here. I know I, I, I'm lazy. I kind of just assembly line method. I know it's all feet per feet per feet per. Okay. These are minutes. So to make this work, right, that's got to be minutes to the fifth. What the heck is feet? Somebody tell me what the name of that is. It's not acceleration. It's not jerk. What is it? Is it crackle? crackle? Ah, crackle. Ah, crackle. You go, hey, we don't see crackle very much. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> because crackle. <laughs> I mean, jerk, maybe snap. You'll, I bet you've never experienced a crackle in your life. And I hope you never do. So it's pretty uncommon to have a crackle. Uh, if you do, it's probably the last thing you'll experience in your life. That guy blowed up real good. That was a, you see that crackle? <laughs> and uh, for pop, now we're talking uh, nuclear explosion. Okay. Mm, I mean, maybe an electron can handle it, but <laughs> I don't think anything with mass cannot handle it. So this is feet per minute to the fourth. And we know that snap. Uh, and then we skip one, we skip the two, so that the squared, so now we, that happens. So now we have feet per minute squared, that's uh, A, acceleration. And then just plain feet per minute, and that's my V naught. Okay, and then we got another one down here. Um, same idea, this time it's weird units, miles per hour squared. So miles per, miles per, miles per. Hopefully this will be good points for you on the test. This is definitely on the test next week. You need to practice a little bit, you should be fine. Um, now what is that one? What's that first one? Miles per hour what? Would it be to the fourth? All right, so that's snap. This has a little snap to it. Uh, then it's got miles per hour. Oh, cubed. It's got a little jerk to it. And then it's got miles per hour squared. So there's a little accelerate and, and initial acceleration there as well. Okay, is there anything else? There's one more thing maybe. Oh, I'll post this key to four nine tonight if I remember. Ah. All right, so this is um, perfect timing here. This is where we're gonna go tomorrow. We're gonna go with, uh, we gotta finish this whole sheet tomorrow, 410, the front and the back. Um, the front is a uh, cubic situation, uh, sorry, a squared situation. So the front is orange, uh, the back is pink. Um, and Amir, I told you that right here, I told you that they do this like, like this is, this is, and I put, punch into my, into my calculator or on my computer. This is what the graph looks like for that equation. You punch that equation in, this pops out. So you put these dashed dotted lines back here saying we know it's virtual, but that is important physics wise. And there is a turnaround point here and there's one here as well. So, uh, 
all this stuff is interesting. Um, we're, we're, we're diving in as far as, this is as far as we'll get with kinematics for the year. And then we still, oh, I take it back. We do projectile motion starting maybe Tuesday. That's packet five or may wait till after the test and start it on Monday. We do projectile motion. Then we do conservation of momentum. We do momentum and conservation of momentum. Then we do 2D collisions, um, things hitting and bouncing off two dimensionally. That gets complicated. Uh, and then we do, after that, we do forces again and then free body diagrams. And then we do work where the force through position and that gives you energy. And then we do energy at all, kinetic energy, potential conservation of energy. Then we do power where we look at energy over time, like how, like applying energy. Then we talk about machines and power for horsepower and all that kind of stuff, run stadium steps. And then we do torque. And we bring in the idea of force at a distance. Oh, and energy is like dot products. And then we do cross products, which is torque, which causes things to twist. And we kind of end the year on torque because that leads us. Now I'm thinking we're not going to, unless I could get to all that, you know, in two weeks <laughs> without you understanding anything, but, but I don't think we'll get there where we actually understand it. So I'll, I'm probably going to get as far as I can. Then in June, I'm going to do a series of these, what I'm doing right now until we do get it all done. And um, I invite you to come along in June, uh, voluntary, of course. All right. So